Masters of Destiny. Masters of Destiny is the title for this podcast. And I'm using this podcast as a response to a question that was asked yesterday. Where a woman said she's lost her husband. Who had some secret addiction. And has transitioned. And she's now wondering, is he in a good place? Or is he in a bad place? And so we are using this podcast as a lesson for all of us. Now in the Bible it is written, it is better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting. In other words, a funeral house rather than a party. Now here's a question. Why is it that when somebody dies, we lay their bodies in a bed for people to see? Or perhaps their loved ones. You see, people go to um, funerals. Or some people go to funerals because there are free alcohol there to to be enjoyed. Some even go there to find a partner. Some go there to dress up, look good, to catch somebody. Which is why I said, why is it that we lay the person in bed for all to see? This is very important. You, as a soul, in a physical body, fully animated, when you see someone laying in bed, or a dead body, lifeless body, by looking at that which once moved upon the face of the earth, that is to remind you, yourself, that that too is your destiny. Just as that person had plans, visions, ideas, and now laying still, that is to remind you So that you can also comprehend or complete, contemplate that your earthly, all your earthly activities will also end in that manner. Now the Egyptians or the Kemites, they asked a question. And the question was, Does the physical body carry about the soul in the earth? Or does the soul carry the physical body in the earth? Because they want to figure out which one is the stronger. And the answer was, the physical body could not carry the soul about the earth because the soul is eternal and the physical body is mortal it dies so the immortal is carrying the mortal therefore the soul is the one carrying the weight of the physical body about in the earth. Because the person that's laying in bed, or the body that's laying in bed, is laying there because the soul has left it, now cannot move. If you try to pick up a dead body, or a lifeless body, shall we say, It is very heavy. 
because there's no life in it to balance it. Yet, when you are alive and someone tries to pick you up, although you, you're still heavy, it is easier to, to lift someone up when they are alive because you as a soul, you can balance the body in a way that a person can easily pick you up. Why you tense yourself in a body or stiffen yourself in a way that a person can easily lift you up. But if you try to pick up a dead body, the weight simply drops because there's nothing to support it. Now, we are told to bury our treasures in heaven where thieves do not steal. Does God have a universal bank where we can bank our money? Of course not. So then what treasures are we supposed to bank in heaven where thieves do not steal? We are talking about our deeds on earth. If an initiate who has already received knowledge of self is to act, their actions will be right actions. And by doing so, they are investing into the higher kingdom. We have all fallen short of the glory of God. And as the Kemite said, the Egyptian, ancient Egyptians, they said, only God is good. We all have our shortcomings. In other words, our faults. So no one is perfect. But we are on a journey to perfection. Your destiny is to be perfect. And we are masters of that destiny. If you go to anyone or spiritual person that says to you or tells you, they can tell you your destiny. You have seen a liar. Because destiny can be altered. Destiny can be manipulated. Because we have free will, our choices that we make in our lifetime is what determines our destiny. Not a fixed destiny that God has given us. Otherwise, there will be no freedom. There will be no free will. Therefore, we must understand just because someone has a problem and drinks alcohol excessively because I drink wine on occasions if you say someone has an addiction therefore he's going to go to hell perhaps that was his way of dealing with whatever problems he had because he wasn't spiritual enough to deal with those problems and as such this person or this individual through the law of rebirth which is a universal law will give him a chance in another body to perfect himself. Those who suffer a great deal are those who commit premeditated crimes. You know, if you go to court, they normally try to determine whether it was an accident or did you fantasize about your crime for a period of time before you carried it out. 
then you get a sentence because you had the intention to do it. So some people are really evil. And some people just fall short from time to time. Those who are evil are those who incarnate back on earth to suffer that which they have done. And even those are eventually given a chance to perfect themselves, though they have to go through that which they have done. Because the universal law is, if you get away with a crime on earth, you will not get away with it in the spirit world. Because the eye of God is everywhere. And so, when you read the Kabbalion, the law of cause and effect tells us which is what they call karma. If we can deal with the causes, then we can change the effect. Again, masters of destiny. So if I want peace in my life and I don't go out to commit a crime, then I'll have peace. But the moment the thought comes into my mind and I act it out, I can now expect problems to come back to me. And so just because someone drinks or smoked weed, don't make them evil. But if you smoke the weed and you go around beating people in your house, then that has become an evil act. Because you want to smoke weed, most people want to smoke their weed and relax in your house and be peaceful. Though it does damage the brain cells, but that's when it's done excessively. As they say, too much of everything is bad. Moderation is good. Even food can kill you if you eat too much. And so according to our deeds, there is something in Kemetism that is called the wrapping of the soul in the afterlife before your next rebirth where the demons, I'm not talking about demons, I'm talking about gods, because in, uh, during this period, you're in the hands of Anubis and Osiris, Ceres and Saturn. These two deal with reincarnation and time. They determine when you should enter the earth again in a new body. And so, there is something called spiritual wrapping of the soul. The lighter the, 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 the wrapping is, the more clearer the soul, when it's reborn, will be able to be in touch or stay in touch with its spiritual self. The deeper the wrapping basically means you are somehow cut off from your higher self. So you can live in ignorance, perhaps to pay for that which you have done. And so the more we evolve, the more we remove this wrapping. For example, when you look at the way they wrap the mummy. So each layer that's removed makes you sensitive towards your maker or your higher self. This is why you need to ask yourself a question. Why do monks stay in monasteries? Because they are trying to perfect themselves. In most cases, I don't know what happens today, but the purpose of temples from ancient times was to help the human being find himself 
and stay connected to the source of life. Not today's religion, where Sunday you're in church, Saturday you was in a nightclub. And when we are young, we I, I found myself in a club. Loved every minute of it because I lived in ignorance. Now I'm moving away from such life because I am trying to perfect myself because the vision is to be a priest. And I am not talking about a priest you see in your churches. A perfected soul. One who wishes to become one with his maker. That is the dream that I have for my future. I don't know about you. And so we're going to leave this podcast. And if you have any questions concerning our spiritual growth, then you let us know. Peace.